Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Artsy Bat Brooke and I have a haul today. Now this haul I'm calling my better than art snacks watercolor snacks haul and that's because well watercolor snacks has been spoiling all of their boxes lately and so this was the winter one and when I got it. I already knew exactly what was going to be in it. The only d thing I didn't know was which brushes it would have. And then they also included a watercolor pencil. But basically, I knew exactly what was going to be in this box. Which, to me, was really frustrating. But because they keep spoiling it, I know exactly what's going to be in the next box. So, I decided to order some stuff from Blick. <laughs> so, actually, the first thing I put in my cart is one of the Sennelier um, uh, pans. And the reason why was when I got this box, just for me personally, colors I would like, I wanted some yellow in it just to change the green up, to be able to do orange, and a couple different things. So I got this yellow so I could make this palette more usable for me. And it's not saying that the color palette wasn't bad, it's just not my taste. <laughs> and the one thing to fix it is literally one pan. <laughs> I can still add more, but still it was good. And I did like the fact that I have this capability of keeping all of these together in a little pan and add to it if I liked. But me personally, I just wanted this extra one. And again, I was really frustrated that I knew exactly what came in the box. Now, spoiler warning, if you're getting the most recent box that is going to be shipping May 2023, I opted out of it, and I did something else again, so spoiler warning, okay, you've had your chance to click away, it is these Schmincke Aqua Drop. Now, the reason I ended up doing this instead was I really wanted it, and I thought they were really cool, but... I didn't want to pay the price because I'll insert a video clip here. Here is my ridiculous collection of brushes and this isn't even all of them. And down here is a bunch of my paper and you can't even see any of it. Well, you can't see some of it because of where I have it right now, but it's just getting way too much paper too. Okay. So that's how many brushes I have, and I couldn't really think of what else they were adding to it. They've just been spoiling basically the whole box lately. So I really wanted to try these Aqua Drops and Blick. Oh my goodness, Blick. I love how Blick always has these lower prices. So I looked and I got these. I will try to itemize all the things over here or more maybe over here or down below somewhere just for a comparison so I got this little set which has three primary oh, wow that was weird three primaries as well as black and white and then what I figured out because in addition to showing us what the palette was, they took a picture of those pictures of the actual bottles. So I got in the watercolor snacks box are these three primaries as well as this brilliant orange and this amethyst violet. Now the one thing I was really excited about these is when I looked online, it says they're supposed to be light fast. Yes. Highest light fastness of all cars are rated between five, four or five stars. And they're water soluble. And I really thought that would be awesome because when I looked at it, definitely the pigmentation 
was there and I was so excited for that. So because I could in the picture that watercolor snacks boiled their box with, I could figure out exactly what colors there were. So instead I got the primaries that included a white and a black, these two, and then to round it out I actually grabbed a green. And now this is the frustrating thing. Art subscription boxes are supposed to be so that you have no clue what you're getting or that's why I feel like they always were and I mean art snacks was always you don't know what you're getting and it just seems so weird that watercolor snacks is not doing that anymore and I'm really frustrated with that because that was the one thing I always thought was really cool of watercolors and art well now watercolor snacks art snacks sketchbox my favorite was scrawler box but it just became too much with shipping it across the pond because scrawler box is a british one but still the principle of hey here you go um we're going to send you a mix mystery box you don't know what it's going to be and you're just going to get it and have those paints so that's why I'm really frustrated that watercolor snacks has been spoiling it because there's no mystery there's no fun discovering of what's going to be in the box they keep spoiling it and it's bad enough that what is it yeah sketchbox will post a video of um what's in the box a week before you get it and I think the worst thing about that is they post it to their main um, page on YouTube and you can find it like instantly I have had a couple sketchbox boxes spoiled because that popped up on my for you page and it's so frustrating so then when watercolor snack started was revealing everything. I was really frustrated. Okay, and here are the bottles. I am so glad that all of these are in good condition because these were not wrapped up at all in any bubble wrap and it feels like the bottles are actually plastic because when I tap it, I don't know if you can hear it, it's more of a thud instead of a clink like glass would be. So, looks like everything is in pretty good condition. Now, I know a lot of people um, really have qualms with watercolors and using white. I found that I actually like using white for a couple techniques that doesn't really work well with watering down my paints and it's some type of styling that I developed for some background stuff as well as other painting stuff but I'm really happy to have the white having it opaque white definitely will come in handy just to possibly use it a little bit like gouache and so all of these so this is the crazy thing because I do not need brushes anymore. I mean, for the most part, let's get these out of the way. This is basically the box, which was spoiled, but for the price of the box, actually less than the price of the box, I got three extra paints as well as this paint. And would it have been more if I didn't order through Blick? Probably, but I mean, I was able to get free shipping because I was putting a big enough order. And as long as you get that free shipping, Blick has some of the best prices. I absolutely love Blick. So, these are the ones I got. And what I'm going to do is we're going to do some swatching and playing around with these paints as well as putting this little guy into the other palette and just sort of doing a comparison of 
all the different colors that we can come up with it. So let's transition over to that. Okay, so I did end up swatching it and this was straight from the bottle and now what we're going to do is try after it's dried in the palette and the reason I want to do it is because I normally work from dry watercolors so I want to see if I can have some dry in the palette and just bring them out to occasionally use a little bit or if I need to have the droppers nearby so anytime I want to use them I have to get them out. So I just did two drops into my palette before I did these swatches and a funny thing happened. So you can see that a lot of them have actually sort of lifted up when they dried. So like the red here, well, I guess the magenta, um, the orange. And it looks like that is the purple that ended up lifting up. So I'm going to see how they are re-wetting and we're going to add to our swatches down here.
here is my final art piece. I really love how it turned out. The one thing I will say that these paints are so bright. I really tried to tone it down for the background and still somehow didn't quite get it as toned down as I wanted to. But on a whole, I'm still really happy with this. I mean, for me, can never have too much orange. <laughs> but... I think from an actual art standpoint, I would have liked it a little bit lighter just to make the rest of the scene pop a little bit more. But that's just, uh, I have to play with the paints more. And speaking about playing with the paints, the reason I ended up doing the salt down here is because of some test swatches. That I ended up doing. So I'm going to bring those out for a second. And the reason why I wanted to review these is because they were shocking. Okay, so the first one is I just wanted to have it from dry paint on a cold pressed paper. So I let the paints dry for about two days, made sure that there's no moisture left in them, and then I painted these and this was like right after I did this test so I knew I could re-wet them and so that was really important but look at what happened to the hot press and what was interesting was the hot press dried instantly like the moment the brush touched the page it was dry I couldn't move the paint hardly at all I couldn't do hardly anything with it and it was really weird that the difference is cold cold press hot press no cotton 25 percent cotton normally cotton is supposed to make all the colors pop but ended up making it less pop and now in the second two you'll see a little more what i'm talking about because this is from wet paint so like i Got the dropper out, new drops, and look at how vibrant it is on the cold press. It is just so bright. And then compared to the hot press 25% cotton, this is dull. I mean, like, look at the green and the blue, yellow, orange, the magenta. The purple's not too different. I mean, the black. I hope it shows on camera, but this is like a dark, dark black. This looks gray in person. Yes, I did test white, but I accidentally got blue on the white. You might have seen it on the previous two. I accidentally got a little bit of blue. But yeah, it just was completely shocking. In addition to these, I also tried doing some resists. And, oops, mixed up the order. So this is, again, my cheaper cold press paper, which I love. It's Canson XL. I love using this paper. I've been using it for so many years. It's really great without being, like, professional paper. Whereas this is 25% con. I mean, again, you can see how dull it is. Interesting thing, though, is... When I did white crayon underneath to be a resist, it worked better on the hot press. Might have also been the crayon I used because I wasn't sure how much the crayon was going onto the page. There was a lot of flex. So that's where it's the purple, it's still covered instead of being a resist. This is not as how dark that purple was supposed to be so it did still cover it up I don't know tape worked pretty well I will say if you are putting washi tape down make sure you really press it to get all the edges down because this stuff like found the tiniest little gaps that I thought I had to press down completely and would still go through and then the last experiment, cold pressed, hot pressed, was salt. And you can see 
just how cool it looks on the cold pressed paper. I mean, yeah, I got a little bit on the hot press, but we're just going to move that to the side and look at the cold pressed paper. I definitely think that the purple and the black are my favorites. Definitely for adding salt. You can even see a little bit of difference on the light. I just loved that result and how spider webby it turned out. I think this is one of my favorite paints now to use salt with and it is so cool. I definitely want to use this for more things. At one point I was thinking about like a night scene and using the salt to make like star shapes but then I ended up coming up with this little cauldron idea and I do love how that turned out. My only regret was I was looking at it and I was like oh it's slowly going maybe I need to add more salt so I added more salt and then about a minute after I put um, the salt down and I paused the video I just was zoned out staring at it and all of a sudden it went from barely spreading to whoosh just all spread out and it was so cool to watch and I forgot to try to like record it or anything but yeah I do love that effect I did mix a brown with it I don't know why I find brown very difficult um <laughs> color to mix which is funny I can mix almost any single color in the world and it will take me like five times as long to mix a brown. I can do it. It just takes me longer than mixing any other color. I can color match. I haven't really demonstrated color matching that much, but I'm very good at color matching. I don't even have to have the sample by me. I go to the um, fabric store. I don't even bother bringing a fabric sample with me and I'll just from memory color match things. So normally I'm really good with mixing color matching brown. It looks better now that's dried. When it was wet it looks awful. I mean I even have some in the pan. It's that middle glob. It just yeah it looked horrible and I kept on trying to mess with it making it look better. But thankfully in the end it looked pretty good. So I'm really happy Again, I am so happy I ended up getting the paints without the watercolor snacks box. And that's, again, a personal, like, I just did not have the money to have all this extra stuff that I wasn't going to use. And all I really wanted was the paints. So, also, if you really enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing. If you leave a comment, I will make sure I will try to respond to you. I really do like seeing what you have to say about the video, my artwork, all of that jazz. Have a bat-tastic day. Bye.